This is a little walkthrough of Sutter Patch Data Acquisition Management and Analysis software. We are now at version 2, 203 to be precise, and I will give you an um, introduction. I'll walk you through a few things, the general look and feel of the data, how you can navigate through the data, zoom in, zoom out, visualize the data, and then I will show you how you can acquire data and then do certain types of analysis to give you an overview of some of the program features. It will be only a subset of what's available. And let me start set a patch. First thing once you start it is uh, it assumes that you want to record data. So it will ask where do you want to store your data? And I will save that as screen capture because that's what we're doing here. This is to mainly show the visualization of the data. What we see here is a data set of um, action potentials that were extracellularly recorded from an insect sensillum. And what looks like an individual action potential here, each sweep is actually the average of all action potentials during a total of 10 minutes. That means if you look at each sweep here, 10 milliseconds in duration on a continuous time axis, we would have to zoom in very far in order to see something meaningful. That's why it may make more sense to look at that in a concatenated display where the gaps between the individual sweeps, the 10 minute long gaps, have been replaced with vertical lines. We can zoom in on both the x-axis as you have seen and also the y-axis by just dragging along the axis. Up here we have what we call the overview navigator that not only shows you where you are in the context of the whole recording, but also lets you drag the portion where you are. Once you may have lost your signal because you zoomed in too far, you can recenter it here with this button without rescaling the y-axis. There's probably a reason you zoomed in. And then you can also auto scale the signal where you auto scale both y axes in this case and then also the time axis. One display mode that I'm particularly proud of is the three dimensional display where you see the time course of the action potentials here over the time of the recording, the almost 10 hours. And it looks like in the beginning the waveform was pretty stable until Somewhere here, something suddenly happens. And what happens is we applied a drug. Here it says stim start at the time of that first tag. And that affected the waveform of the action potentials. The peak to peak amplitude becomes bigger. And what's not that easy to see without changing the angle of view is the repolarizing phase here becomes a little longer. And based on a data set like this, which is actually 15 years, almost 20 years old now, we postulated that the drug that we applied here affects two different types of ion channels, non-specific cat ion channels that affect the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude of those extracellular recorded action potentials, and delayed rectified potassium channels that affect the repolarizing phase. And that has since been shown to be the case in patch clamp recordings from isolated cells of this type, isolated olfactory receptor neurons. So the value of this three-dimensional display is also in assay development to find out what parameters do I want to analyze in order to quantify the changes that I'm observing. Once you know what all this means, a top-down view, a column map, would actually give you most of the information, the relatively stable baseline, the peak-to-peak -peak amplitude, the repolarizing phase here, but it's incredibly valuable to be able to show somebody what all that means. Follow along the next episode in the series or jump to the playlist for other informative videos. Subscribe now to keep up with the latest installment.